Hi you guys, I miss you. I hope you're all doing well. Um, today I'm going to read you a story called Christopher, Please Clean Up Your Room. It was one of my favorites when I was a kid. Christopher lived on Glen Place Avenue with his family. He was a fine young man. He helped his neighbors with errands and did his chores. He was good at sports and he came in first in his class. The one thing Christopher wouldn't do was clean his room. His clothes were scattered around, books, papers, and magazines lay all over the floor. The dust was piling up, and Christopher's room stank. The socks under the bed were cheesy. The sandwich behind the drawer grew fungus. The room was so untidy. The shoes smelled funky funky, and the fish bowl stank. Christopher's mother refused to go into his room because she thought there might be snakes in there. His grandmother, when she visited, always fainted. His father never went too near Christopher's door, and when his friends slept over, they had nightmares about rats. Even the wind wouldn't blow through Christopher's room. When his family and his friends complained, Christopher just said, I like my room the way it is. I can find everything. It's comfortable like this. And he refused to clean his room. His parents tried everything. Christopher couldn't have dessert, but he wouldn't clean his room. He couldn't watch TV, but he wouldn't clean his room. He wasn't allowed to have friends over, and he still wouldn't clean his room. The socks under the bed were cheesy. The sandwich behind the, drawer, the door grew fungus. The room was so untidy. The shoes smelled funky funky, and the fish bowl stank. Now the two goldfish who lived in that fishbowl were becoming quite concerned about their health. Christopher had not changed the water in their bowl in weeks, and it was green and murky. They felt like they were choking. So the goldfish decided to find a way to get Christopher to clean his room. All that day they thought and talked, but they couldn't come up with a plan. That night, as they were having supper, they spotted a cockroach hurrying across the room. Mr. Cockroach, wait! Mr. Cockroach, a word with you, one fish said. The cockroach stopped and climbed up to the fishbowl. Good evening, Miss Fish, Miss Fish. What can I do for you, he asked. We need you to help us do a job, replied the fish. We need to get Christopher to clean up his room. Oh, no, indeed, said Mr. Cockroach. I can't stay here. This room is much too dirty, much too dirty. I only take shortcuts through here to get next door. And besides, he likes it like this. He'll never clean up. What about your friends? Would they help? asked the fish. No, they feel the same way, replied Mr. Cockroach. They can't stand to come in here. The socks under the bed are cheesy. The sandwich behind the door grows fungus. The room is so untidy. Those shoes smell funky funky and the fish bowl stinks. Then the fish started to cry, because no one would help them. They were doomed. Mr. Cockroach looked at the floor. He hated to see the fish cry, and he felt sorry for them. But what could he do? Suddenly, he had an idea. Don't cry, he said. I'll speak to my people, and I'll let you know what we can do. And then he went off to the big sugar feast at the store next door. That night, the cockroaches met and planned. Word was sent to the goldfish, and the fish were happy because they knew that the cockroaches were just right for the job. At 11.30, it began. Thousands of cockroaches had gathered. Cockroaches from the east and from the west. Cockroaches from the north and the south. There were cockroaches of every kind. They put on their gas masks, and at 11.45, they started to crawl towards Christopher's room. Christopher was sound asleep. He'd played a good game of baseball that day, shared a Sunday with his friend Hal, and then once more refused to clean his room. Someday when he was older, he might clean it up, but for now, he was comfortable with it the way it was. The socks under the bed were cheesy. The sandwich behind the, the door grew fungus. The room was so untidy. The shoes smelled funky funky and the fish bowl stank. By 11.55, the cockroaches were in place. 
the goldfish looked on as the roaches landed all over the room. Every surface was covered in a mixture of shades and colors. At midnight, it began. A cockroach dropped on Christopher's eye, and he blinked. Another one dropped on his nose, and he brushed it away, and suddenly one dropped in his mouth, and he woke up with a start. He turned on the lights, but he couldn't scream. He was too shocked. He tried to brush the cockroaches off his bed, but they just kept coming and coming. Then the ones on the wall started to move, and they spelled out, Christopher, tidy up your room now. I'll do it tomorrow, Christopher said, and the cockroaches replied, tidy up your room now, we mean business. They started coming towards him, blue roaches, gray roaches, black roaches, brown roaches, striped ones, and polka dot ones, all kinds of roaches, and they surrounded his bed, fat ones, skinny ones, big ones, small ones, and they just kept coming. Christopher was terrified. He jumped out of bed and ran for the closet, where he got the duster, the broom, the vacuum, and the laundry basket. Quickly, he started to pack up all his clothes and put them away. He looked up, and a quarter of the cockroaches were gone. He dusted his books and shelves, tidied his papers, and looked again. And another quarter of the cockroaches were gone. He swept and vacuumed, and another quarter of the cockroaches went away. He cleaned all under his bed, and the last quarter of the cockroaches went away, except for Mr. Cockroach, who stood on the dresser beside the fishbowl. Christopher opened his window, and he took the fishbowl for a good cleaning. When he returned, Mr. Cockroach went away, too. The fish were happy, and the wind blew through the room again. Everything was nice and clean, light and bright, spick and span, and even Christopher felt better. He jumped back into bed and fell fast asleep. The next morning, Christopher's family was amazed. His mother came to see his room. His father came to see his room. His grandmother came to see his room, and even his friends came to see his room. But they were puzzled. What had come over Christopher that night? Well, Christopher isn't talking about it, but any time there's a speck or spot of dirt, a pile of dust, a crumb on the floor or a bunch of clothes on the chair, Christopher makes sure he cleans it up. He remembers only too well the night of those cockroaches. Hope you guys are doing well. Go clean your rooms. <laughs>